happy Wednesday. I hope uh, you guys had a great day today and that everything went uh, very smoothly. I know you had a short day, so that's always fun. Um, I am going to do lesson 16 video here. George is real excited. He's feeling a bit better, but his um, pink eye is still still there. He's on a lot of medicine, so he's doing his best to get better. Um, in the meantime, I also am sick. I um, have something, probably the flu, so I'm not well, and I am not going to be at school tomorrow. I am sorry, and I'll miss you guys, but you guys um, are going to be in good hands. I just don't want to be passing whatever nastiness is <clears throat> around our family to you guys, and I need to get all better. And please cross your fingers that I don't get pink eye in my eyes. I'm feeling a little itchy. <laughs> I cannot get pink eye. We'll just plan on me not getting pink eye. Um, okay, so lesson 16 video. We're going to get more into the standard algorithm, and we're just going to continue practicing and moving forward. And it's going to be great. And Georgie believes in you, and so do I. So here we go, guys. Team here. We are going to be using uh, what we've learned so far uh, in finding fractions of fractions, and we're going to apply that learning to some word problems, multi-step word problems, um, and we are going to organize information in our word problems in a, a tape diagram. So let's look at number three. The Booster Club sells 240 cheeseburgers. One fourth of the cheeseburgers had pickles. One half of the remaining burgers had onions and the rest had tomato. How many cheeseburgers had tomato? Okay. So with these types of problems, it's really, really important to kind of visualize and understand what's going on before you just start blinding, blindly calculating things, you know, adding one fourth and one half or multiplying random numbers together. It's really important that you process, analyze what's going on, and then we actually start doing the calculations. So let's let's check this out. Let's organize what we have. We've got a lot of cheeseburgers. 240, in fact. There's a lot of cheeseburgers. Okay. One fourth of the cheeseburgers had pickles. So let's go ahead and chop this tape diagram into four equal pieces. One fourth had Pickles. I mean, I don't know what a cheeseburger would be without pickles. I don't know how the rest of these people don't want pickles, but that's another, that's another day. One half of the remaining burgers had onions. Okay, so here we have three fourths left. One half of three fourths had onions. And the rest had tomato. Okay, so if we're going to find one half of three fourths, the rest that we have remaining will be one half because you guys know if we take half out of something, we'll have half remaining. So one half had onions, and one half of three fourths had tomato. Now we need to figure out exactly how many uh, cheeseburgers we're looking at. Okay. Okay, so we're kind of going to kind of backtrack here. Um, first of all, let's figure out what is one half of three fourths. Well, you guys know one half of three fourths um, is equal to one half times three fourths. One times three is three. Two times four is eight. So three eighths are going to have onions. We're not looking for what fraction of cheeseburgers had onions. Oh. Is he okay, baby? He's okay, Shoki. He's okay. Georgie fell. Um, we're looking at three three eighths now of 240. Because three eighths lies inside this 240. We want to know how many cheeseburgers we're looking at if three eighths of 240 had onions. You guys can do that very easily. We're going to go back to kind of before mid-module assessment. We're going to find a fraction of a whole. So upstairs we have 3 times 240. 
and downstairs we have eight. What we can do here, guys, <coughs> is we can simplify before we multiply. Because I'm seeing 240 and 8, they have a factor in common. Um, 240, well, I'm, I'm actually looking at 24 and 8 having a factor in common. 24 divided by, or um, 8 times 3 is 24. So we can divide 24 by 8 and get 3, but that's not a 24, it's a 240. So 240 divided by 8 is 30, and 8 divided by 8 is 1. So now our multiplication is very simple. We just have 3 times 30, or 3 times 3, which is 9, and then we slap on a 0. So our final uh, question here is how many cheeseburgers had tomato? Well, we know 1 half of 3 fourths had onions, and 1 half of 3 fourths had tomato. So the amount of cheeseburgers with tomato are 90 cheeseburgers. So do you see how we're applying all of the amazing problem solving we've been doing to this problem here? Um, and it's really just about taking it one step at a time. So let's take a look at another one here, guys. Oh my gosh, guys, when I saw number four, I knew that it was a problem that I had to have in my video. It's about rock collections. I love rock collections. I'm going to go ahead and insert my name here because I would love to be a part of a rock collecting word problem. Um, so don't mind me for just a moment. Um, okay. So Mrs. C is sorting her rock collection. Two-thirds of the rocks are metamorphic and three-fourths of the remainder are igneous uh, rocks. If the three rocks left over are sedimentary, how many rocks does she have? Oh, you're speaking my language, Eureka. Okay, so before we just start calculating, let's make some sense in a visual model of what is going on with Mrs. Calamaris's rock collection. So, uh, two-thirds of, of her rocks are metamorphic. So we have a tape diagram cut into uh, three equal, equal chunks, cut into three equal chunks. So two-thirds are metamorphic, and three-fourths of the remainder are igneous. So <clears throat> I'm going to chop the remainder into four equal parts, because three-fourths of the remainder, this was our remainder, are igneous. Happy eye. If three rocks left over after our igneous, if the three rocks left over are sedimentary, how many rocks does she have? Very interesting problem. Okay, so we're going to kind of work backwards. So we're left with three. Our remainder was cut into one, two, three, four equal chunks. If this chunk is three, then what is this chunk? Thank you, Ira. It is three. What is this chunk? Thank you, Adve. It is three. What is this chunk? Thank you, Cole. It is three. And then let's visualize. We originally cut these into two thirds. Let me go ahead. We originally cut this uh, tape diagram into two, I'm sorry, into thirds. So I'm going to use orange and trace over my original thirds. So, we have, one, we have one, two, three thirds. If I have one, two, three, four threes in this chunk, you guys know that we have 12 rocks there. If this tape diagram is cut into one, two, three equal pieces, and if this chunk is 12, how many rocks do I have in this chunk? Thank you, Arwen, we have 12. And then Sienna, what do we have in this chunk? Thank you, Sienna, we have 12. Okay, final question here is how many rocks does Mrs. Calamaris have? That's just simply adding 12 plus 12 plus 12, or 12 times three, which I know most of you can probably do in your head. Um, and Madison is telling me that three 12s are 36. 
So Mrs. Calaveras was 36 rocks. Love that one. We're going to do one more here, guys. At uh, number six, this is an interesting one because it doesn't take any complicated uh, calculations, but it just really requires us to understand the problem. Um, and don't mind these marks. For some reason, my I've lost my pen pad and I can't erase them, so just pretend those aren't there. Okay, so we have Parks is wearing several rubber bracelets. One third of the bracelets are tie dye, one sixth are blue, and one third of the remainder are camouflage. If Parks wears two camouflage bracelets, how many bracelets does he have on? Very interesting. This is what I noticed first. So I have a one third, I have one sixth, and I have one third. Let's go ahead and convert our thirds into uh, fractions that have six as a denominator um, because that's going to help us compare them a little bit more easily. So if I wanted to convert one third into an equivalent fraction that has six as a denominator, I would multiply three by two to get six in the bottom. And then if I multiply three by two, you guys know we have to multiply one by two. One times two is two. So one third is equivalent to two sixths. So that is good to know. Okay, so now let's take this information and put it into a tape diagram. Let's work with um, sixths. So let's go ahead and chop this into six equal pieces. We're going to have four, five, six. So we know that two sixths of the bracelets are tie dye. We know one sixth of the bracelets are blue. And then we have one third or two sixths of the remainder are camouflage. So our remainder is this. And wow, if we're looking for one third, we can see that very easily because we have three left. One third is right there. So one third of the remainder, after we look at tie dye and blue, uh, are camouflage. If Parks wears two camouflage bracelets, how many bracelets does she have in, at all? So the camouflage, sorry I can't change my color, camouflage are two. And all of these boxes are chopped into equal pieces. So if camouflage, this box are two, all of the other boxes are two. So we're looking for how many bracelets do we have in all? Well, that's just simply two times six, which is 12. So this problem, very, very easy. No major calculations, but it's just really important to understand the problem. Cool. So that's it for tonight, you guys. Um, have fun practicing. You guys have all the tools you need uh, to be great. And uh, missing you. I, I um, really, really hope to be back with you guys on Friday. Until we meet again.